We start with new developments in the unrest rocking college campuses nationwide, and we are learning more about the clearing of a building at Columbia University in New York. Prosecutors say a police officer fired his gun while clearing protesters from Hamilton Hall late Tuesday night. The Manhattan prosecutor's office says nobody was injured. There were no students in the immediate vicinity, but this incident is now under review. And there's no sign unrest is slowing as pro-Palestinian demonstrations continue into their third week. Even as the school year comes to a close, tensions are heating up at student protests and encampments across the country. More than 2,000 people have now been arrested at pro-Palestinian demonstrations since mid-April, and that includes dozens of arrests made just over the past 24 hours amid chaotic clashes between pro police and protesters. That violence serious enough to prompt President Joe Biden to break his silence on the situation. This isn't a moment for politics. It's a moment for clarity. So let me be clear, peaceful protest in America, violent protest is not protected. Peaceful protest is. It's against the law when violence occurs. And we're not just talking about New York and Los Angeles here. The dots on this map show how protests on college campuses have exploded in numbers across the middle of the country, too, despite crackdowns by police and university officials. But we are starting to see some encampments and demonstrations cleared out. That includes the massive protest on UCLA's campus. Helmeted police officers moved into the pro-Palestinian encampment early this morning, some clashing with protesters as they worked to clear the crowds. Scripps News National Correspondent James Packard has been reporting from UCLA all week. And James, it seems uh, pretty quiet there now compared to that scene we saw earlier today. Yeah, good evening, Maritza. It sure is a lot quieter, an entirely different world from what we saw just 24 hours ago when a fortified encampment took over this area of UCLA's campus. Now with barricades up and a clear quad, some stragglers are coming by to just observe. This is the story of one campus, though, in a sea of many where these protests have taken over. Vandalism, trespassing, breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. After days of silence, President Biden speaking out about the protests on college campuses across the country. He emphasized peaceful protests are protected under the law, but violence isn't. His remarks come after police confronted about a thousand protesters early Thursday on UCLA's campus. After hours of arrest warnings to the crowd, police began pulling down barricades and dismantling the encampment. Police used flashbangs and rubber bullets to disperse the crowd. Some protesters left voluntarily. Police detained about 130 others. Some protesters were throwing uh, fire extinguishers at us, uh, as well as uh, smoke, uh, bottles, and other, other uh, equipment. Uh, even canopies that they were throwing at us. Uh, but for the most part, the operation went well. Students have been arrested or detained at campuses across the country. According to an Associated Press tally, there have been at least 2,000 arrests so far. The arrests have created a divide between students, some faculty members, and college administrators. Faculty and staff uh, have no say in what's happening. Uh, and this kind of police state is not is not going to work for free and open inquiry, the kind of college that we need. Of course, there was an order to disperse before those arrests were made this morning. What's interesting, Maritza, is among the people who've gathered here, I'm hearing some of the most substantive conversation and debate about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that I've heard since this encampment started. All right, National Correspondent James Packard, uh, I would love to hear more about that when we have more time. Uh, yet another day, thank you so much for your on-the-ground coverage there. We really appreciate it. And it's not just these coastal campuses. Seeing an uptick in unrest just a few miles from where we're broadcasting here, students at the University of Montana in Missoula held a strike for Gaza in solidarity with their peers. And I was at UM's campus yesterday as dozens of students stood on the steps of Main Hall armed with signs calling for an end to the war in Gaza. The protest and march around campus remained peaceful. One counter protester showed up with an Israeli flag. 
No protests at UM today, but students are still calling on the university to disclose its financial investments and divest from companies that profit from the war. UM's president, Seth Bodner, joins us now to talk more about these demonstrations on his, his campus and across the country. Good evening, President Bodner. So I want to start, we're hearing from so many students who are saying, you know, they support free speech, but they don't necessarily feel safe right now. What are you doing to ensure students on your campus feel safe? Yeah, thank, thanks, Marita. And this is this is a, uh, a tension that's always existed on college campuses. Uh, you know, exercising free speech and free expression, it's a critical pillar of public flagship universities like the University of Montana. At the same time, one person's right to free speech cannot infringe on the rights of others to access education in a safe environment that's conducive to learning. So we have clear policies and procedures in place to ensure that students can exercise their free speech rights, but without harming the educational and operational mission of the university. Let's talk more about what administrators like you are up against here. Uh, there's a fine line between freedom of speech as we're talking and ensuring the safety. I'm wondering about the conversations you're having, not only in your office, but with other administrators. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, uh, we have to fervently defend every member of our community's First Amendment rights. That, that's incredibly important that, that, we, that a, a college campus, especially a public campus, is, is a forum for the free and, and, and informed expression of ideas. But again, when it crosses the line into infringing on the, the rights, the opportunities of others, to, uh, to access education, we can't allow that. You know, taking over public buildings, violating policies, that's not an effective way to make change. You know, we, we try to engage our students and, and encourage them to take part in, in civil discourse and in dialogue across difference, to defend your position, but to do so in an informed, respectful way without uh, infringing on the rights of others. These are the values we work every day to instill in our students. And do you feel like the students at University of Montana accomplished that yesterday? Yeah, as, as you mentioned, we did experience here on our campus a protest this week regarding the conflict in, in Gaza. You know, uh, but as you also mentioned, the protests and, and counter demonstrations here at the university were peaceful. Uh, our, our students, our community members, uh, shared their perspective. Uh, they made their their point of view known, uh, but they did so in accordance with the policies that we have here. And that's you know really an illustration of a dynamic that that perhaps we see too often. Um, that that the narrative around all of higher education institutions is is dominated by what I would call a, a non representative sample of uh, of of mostly private institutions. Uh, you know that that aren't necessarily representing the the full spectrum of of, of educational institutions in this country. Yeah, let's talk a little bit more about that. I mean, there are th common themes here and criticisms around higher education, whether it's the cost or these demonstrations and protests. And a look across the country, the protests all look different. I mean, the ones at Columbia are starkly different from the one that I saw at your campus yesterday. Um, but it seems that they're kind of all lumped together. So what would you like the rest of America to know about the protests unfolding at these smaller universities like yours? Well, I, you know, look, I think every campus is going to have a different uh, uh, experience um, here at the University of Montana. Again, we have an engaged student body. We believe that's important. We believe an engaged and educated citizenry is, is fundamentally important to the health of our republic. Um, at the same time, we want them to be informed participants in that society. Uh, and, and, and what I think what this illustrates is maybe a broader trend where we see examples of what happens on one campus. And, and you mentioned student debt. You know, you, you take a university like Columbia, you know, Columbia University, where literally the, the tuition is 10 times what it is here at the University of Montana. Uh, and again, it's just a very different institution and a, and a, and a very different experience. I want to show you very briefly here, we found this article from Montana student newspaper showing that nearly 54 years ago to the day, University of Montana students protested the deadly shootings at Kent State and the U.S. military's involvement in Cambodia. Um, decades later, we're seeing, you know, this, this walkout yesterday. So what's your message to students about the school's role in, and legacy in events like these? As I mentioned, our, our 
our goal is to create and to shape educated, informed, engaged participants in their communities. So students protesting and sharing their perspective, that in and of itself is not a bad thing. That is how progress is made in this country. It always has been. But when it crosses the line into violence and when it infringes on mm -hmm. others' rights to receive their education, that's what we can't tolerate. So uh, student protest, that's not a bad thing. In fact, the, this country was, was founded by people who protested a situation they didn't like uh, with the Boston Tea Party. So, so protest isn't bad, but it, it cannot infringe upon the rights of others. All right, University of Montana President Seth Bodner, thanks so much for joining us tonight.